Hello and welcome to another Earth Science Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Buss, and we're going to continue our theme of atmospheric circulation and basically talking about different types of winds and breezes. So let's take a look at uh, the planet Earth on the left here. All right, and so basically what we've got on the left is we've got an idealized Earth where you, you don't have, like on the right, you're not dealing with continents and, you know, different things stopping the wind, mountains to blow over, and all that kind of stuff. So what would happen if we didn't have any of that and we had a nice, smooth, perfect surface of the Earth? Um, well, we'd have the same types of um, things, but it just look a little little more perfect, so to speak. So you'd have, you'd have still the warm air rising at the equator called the equatorial low pressure system, low pressure because the air is rising, intertropical convergence zone there. All right, then north and south of that, you're going to have the trade winds. Why are they called the trade winds? Well, they're just constantly blowing in, the, in that direction, you know. Why are they deflecting? They're deflecting because of the fact that the earth is rotating. Remember that we had talked about in the last podcast how the fact that the earth rotates, the air is actually deflecting because, uh, you know, if you're a, a plane flying directly north to south, you'd actually end up in a city to the west of you because of the fact that the earth is rotating away from you. So moving North and south of the trade winds are the subtropical high pressure systems. Why are they high pressure? Because the air is falling at those those places. Um, not shown in here, but also called the horse latitudes. And north and south of that, we have the westerlies. All right, and those are similar to the trade winds in that they are just constantly um, blowing and they're very dependable. Um, and then subpolar low pressure systems. Again, why are they called low pressure? Because of the fact that the air is once again rising at those areas. All right, taking a look at the Earth on the right, you see the same stuff going on. It's just that because of the fact that you've got land masses to move around, um, it's just not idealized, obviously. it's uh, you, you have major high pressure and high pressure systems here, and you just have variations around the continents and so on. So, All right, and just interesting to note that you do have jet streams are basically... Uh, pockets of air, so to speak, um, at the, I don't know, at the place where the Hadley and Farrell cell meet, and the place where the Farrell and the Polar cell meet. So you have the mid-latitude jet stream and the subtropical jet stream, all right, and those are Earth-wide. Those things are going all the way around the planet. And yeah, you can catch one of those if you're flying long-distance flight and make up a lot of time. Sorry, my text is all over the place on here, so if you can read this. Sea breezes, what's going on there? And land breezes, okay? So it all, all matters, that, you know, if it's, if, it's, uh, if it's winter or summer, basically, um, and where's the warm air and where's the cold air. All right, so in the summer, which is the top one here, you've basically got land that's warm and sea that's cold. And so a sea breeze is when the air cools over the ocean and then bro uh, blows uh, on land and then cools the land. So the land is near the ocean at this point is going to be cooler in the summer because the ocean is cooling it. What happens in the winter? All right. Well, in the winter, the ocean is warmer because the land is a lot cooler. All right. Snow and ice, not good. So the air is actually warming, so to speak, over the ocean, which is still cold, but it's warming over the ocean. And then it is blowing over the land and, and warming the land. So, uh, a maritime climate, like San Francisco, is going to experience the sea breezes, land breezes. That's going to moderate the climate. In the summer in San Francisco, not getting too hot. and the winter, is not getting that cold. All right, well, the text is all over the place on this one. This is monsoon winds. They're basically large-scale versions of land and sea breezes. Um, you're just getting, you know, very, very massive uh, winds and, and blowing over from the sea onto the land in the summer and from the land onto the sea in the winter. Uh, monsoon winds uh, occur where you have very hot summer lands that are next to the sea. All right, mountain and valley breezes. Um, basically, just, I mean, all this stuff just makes sense if you think warm air rises, cold air falls. So if you live, uh, you know, in a valley area and it's daytime and the sunlight is shining down on the earth and it's warming the surface of the earth, then the air on the surface of the earth is going to warm and it's going to rise. And so every day in this area, if you lived here, you'd always have the air blowing up this direction and up the mountain. What happens when the sun goes down? The air cools and then it's going to always go in this direction. So uh, you're, you're just going to experience a daily fluctuation in which direction the air is going to move in a valley. Catabatic winds, same thing's going on here. Um, you've got, let me, let me pause here. 
Catabatic wind is just an extreme of this. Um, you, in, in nighttime here, you've just got you know an Arctic area, just very, very, very cold, intensely cold air flowing down from the mountain areas, and then just boom, just finding a place that they can go out to the sea here, just going from higher elevation down to a lower elevation, and you can just see this stuff, just not not good stuff, just really, really, really cold air blasting down as it cools, uh, just trying to find the lowest area. All right, the text came out okay. Well, here, uh, rain shadow effect in Chinook winds. Basically, if you've got air blowing from left to right, you've got a mountain, and the air is going to contain humidity or moisture, and as it rises, you're going to hit the dew point. The dew point is the point at which it's going to stop being water vapor, and it's going to start being water as a liquid, and it's going to rain, so you're, or snow. So as your air is rising over the mountain, as it's pushing from left to right, it's dropping all of its precipitation and humidity, and when it clears the mountain, it's going to start warming up again, uh, and it is going to be dry. And so you're going to have desert climate on the right, and you're going to have, I don't know, plants growing here on the left. Uh, no, sorry about that, the text is all screwed up on this again. Um, not a huge deal, just last slide here, desert winds, just high summer temperatures in the desert create high winds. You can see that huge storm coming, the wind storm coming, um, monsoon storm. So desert winds pick up dust as there is not a lot of vegetation to hold down the dirt and sand, and you, you basically just have pretty nasty storm coming through. A lot of sand in the air. Alright, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.